Well, hello to AAA Wargaming. This is going to be the first of the Art of War. It's good to be back. Uh, apologies for being away for a while. Uh, it's been it's been pretty hectic as usual. I think this is just this time of year, uh, especially we close the financial window for all those in banking industry. You probably understand why. Um, so what we're looking at now is the first of the Art of War. Um, apologies, I've not managed to put some music over the uh, over the video at the moment, I'm just starting to transfer to OBS as previously. I was just using PowerPoint, but uh, I'm getting there. So hopefully uh, this will be a good new video. So let's get on with the thing. So the first part of Art of War, this is uh, down at Bristol. It was it's a new venue this time, and it was a fantastic uh, area run by uh, Scab Fat, Scab Fat, Bay and uh, Gobbo and a few others and. Uh, the Bristol Ninjas. It was a f it was a really good venue. Um, it's really welcoming. The packs were fantastic. Not only did you get sort of like a dice roll set, but you also they, they printed out all the army books with stuff like the objectives, the deployments, and the um, like scoring victory points and stuff. It made it really easy. Um, and the whole thing was very well organised from start to finish. Um, they did uh, some what they called the War of Art. <laughs> good play but it ranged it copied a similar vein to the masters open so you could have like best model best unit on top of best army and i think uh, and you also you didn't have to use our units or models that you were playing with that weekend which i think is quite good it just brings out some of the some of the other stuff people have been working on that sometimes the prettiest models are not necessarily the best you've got so i i think that adds a, a different part and just welcomes a different part of the hobby as well um, so in my first game, I was originally against Big Jim and his demons, but then it got changed, and I was playing Martin Brawley and his Saurian Ancients. So uh, met him down on table 23. Uh, unfortunately, well, no, fortunately, this is his first game ever of Ninth Age, so uh, we did a bit of talking to, but it was it was good fun, um, and we finished just in time. And I hope uh, he enjoyed. He, I hope he enjoyed his first game back into Ninth Age. Uh, I remember looking at his army, going. Ugh. Uh, it's, it's had some very scary Alcarnasaur, but no Quattle this time, so that was interesting. But um, we knew the uh, deployment, which was Dawn of Zolt, but we didn't know the secondary objectives. They were always rolled just before uh, the game, which I, I quite like as well, because it means it gives you a little bit of shock factor, and you've got to think on your feet, and I think that's quite a cool part of the game. I think that's why you see... Uh, yeah, I, I, I just quite like that. So... Uh, going on with this, right? So my list, uh, I've kept it. I've changed it up for the this tournament. I wanted to do that. I, so I this was when I was speaking to someone after the Masters Open, and they would, they would, or no, it was on the Saturday evening, and they were like, "Don't go big, big lords," and it got me thinking. Actually, apart from the Avatar, I can't make big lords work. So that doesn't mean they don't work for Silver Nuts because they're quite punchy, and I do love them. When they when it happens, it's quite funny with a stag lord going. Yep, seven attacks, strength seven, AP three, battle focus, lightning reflexes, etc. But um, I think I was going to try this game. Um, I've always been quite conservative. Just it's it's probably not anything to do with it. But I, I quite like having a leadership nine general, so I took a dried ancient, and I've always wanted to use divination, uh, just because of the rise of demon legions. Even though you only see about three or four a tournament, so. It's probably not that useful. But what I do like is how that pairs really well with Blade Dancers. Because they're already division H, uh, sorry, defensive skill 6, you put, give them a choice of scrying or know thine enemy, and anything with offensive 4 or below is hitting them on 5s uh, straight away. You then add Forest and Brace on top, and, well, and give them a choice of 4 plus 4 to or Forest and Brace, and suddenly you've got hitting on fives but re-rolling sixes to hit it's a really really powerful combo one thing i didn't account for was getting um getting oaken thrown off with an adept because you actually need two dice if you're rolling fours uh, on one dice it's not that safe but i've i will go into it i've worked there's another tournament in may for team and i've worked out how i think i get around that or I've misread the rules and I haven't done it properly, but I think I've found a way around that. But anyway, um, I've got uh, Chieftain, Battle Standard Bearer, my standard build with two Aether Icons, Sylvan Blades, Hero's Heart, and Drums of Cameron. I love Drums of Cameron. It's such a good thing. Uh, just a reminder, so this was tournament, the list would put in before the update. So in this tournament, Hero's Heart is still AP3. But I, I agree with the changes, actually. It's just so powerful. 
I mean, yeah, I, I absolutely support what they're doing. I think putting here is hard to AP2 is, is generally a good thing. Uh, and the price has gone down now, so it's 50 points. So that means you have 10 points spare for a potion of strength. That's probably going to hit on twos. <laughs> it's brilliant, isn't it? Uh, next, I chose the Wizard of Veteran Druidism with a Magical Heirloom because I think you have to have at least one spell if you can take Blade Dancers that gives it a wood. Uh, and then Lightning Van Braces. Um, everyone's been raving around it. I quite like it. I think you need another uh, missile spell to use alongside with it. Otherwise, the phases where you want to use it, people just focus on that. And as it's only 4 rate, it's not hard to stop. But um, it's still something quite like. And then the Dried Ancient wizard deck. The idea is this guy would go with dryads and sit behind the blade dancers and be able to hit the forest rangers as well because I think forest rangers with lightning reflex away just need that little bit of a buffing. I've then got two to ten heath riders as heath hunters uh, and these are just going to rock around the board and shoot everything. Strength four at short range so yeah pretty happy with that. Uh, I've got five really of heath riders with shield and musician for scoring so very useful on breakthrough which is this one. Uh, I've got 11 drives with champion because this is even if you've got a riding a risen character monster that's not flying suck up the champion and he's still steadfast so yeah so that's definitely something so I can hold them in my turn or his turn and then can charge in my turn and potentially save the unit that's the theory anyway uh, in terms we then got the forest range of the flaming banner just in case it's kind of thing it's something like trolls um, I think I, think, I love trolls. I think there's something else, or something like, um, really, uh, what are they called, wretched ones, something like that, where I've got to go and take them out. And this this unit is still less than a unit of wretched ones, and that's what I quite like, to, especially in the points update. They've got even less. Um, 23 forest rangers. They're really really powerful now. Now that they're cheap, I don't. Vanguard doesn't suit this list because I'd just be sending them off into ether on their own with no support. But um, I, th I think it works really well with this because it's it's a big scoring unit and it, it, it allows me to take the two units of 10 Heath Hunters and Gore. Uh, two units of Tree Fathers because uh, I think they pair really well with Divination as well. Um, I can get them to be re-rolling to hit with Divine Attacks, their Crush Attack, or even hitting on threes because I'll go to Offensive 7 on there. And especially when you add Scrying and that. So again anything on offensive three so a lot of other monsters are going to be hitting them on five with no line enemy so i think it's a really good build then you've got the blade dancer the aether icon the only thing i've thought about this that changes up is predator pendant because with the drums of kenrin people don't want to come into that range they can't flee and then you get minus one to hit and if you can bounce through armies but i, I just think mr4 is such a powerful thing um it's quite useful it just stops people just don't start throwing spells at them at all if I'm honest, uh, and it just it's the best way to protect them. Uh, 10 silver and sentinels, silver blade because I have 10 points spare, and 9 sentinels as well. Uh, with the points update, I can get those 10 sentinels to swap the silver blades and give them scout, which is brilliant. But um, overall, I love the list. I think it's got a lot of shooting with 39 bows. Um, it's got some good combat threats with the two tree fathers, blade dunce, and forest rangers, and it's really, really mobile as well with the heath hunters on the flanks as well. And I, I quite like the scoring with the heath riders. Um, so yeah, I'll give my thoughts at the end. There's some differences, but going in, I was really quite happy, and people were spotting this. The only thing that got spotted on uh, Jack Chapman's The Thundercox with Rory and James McDonnell, uh, they um, they picked out the magic. And I think I went up to Rory partway through because I know him through another WhatsApp group. And I went, you're spot on with the magic. It's It doesn't quite fit, partly because the lightning round very isn't supported, but it just doesn't think. I, I, I need to have a look and rework it to have a think. I, I'm umming and ahhing between Cosmo and Shamanism um, instead of the Dryad Ancient, partly because he was never in range for leadership nine anyway especially with these tree fathers because they're rocking around all over the shop and uh yeah and it also yeah i'll, I'll tell you why at the end what i think so <clears throat> in terms of his list uh, sorry for the underlining i copied this straight from the forum and and got bored trying to de-link every single word but um he's got a surin veteran bsb uh standard that went in his surin Whereas he's got a warlord on Kano that's starful shard, so pretty standard, but pretty scary. 
Uh, he's got another Warlord with Death Cheater, Glory of the Dawn Age. So I was like, Ugh, if that goes into his Temple card, it's going to be really difficult to get through that, especially with my Tree Fathers. Uh, Skin Priest with Druidism. Uh, so he's got the Magical Heirloom as well. So he's going to have a, a pretty shooty thing when you care that with Mystic Traveller. Um, and then he's got Saurian Warriors with Crocodile. And that gives him plus one armor in combat. So even against my AP th two... Blade Dancers, they get a 5 up, and even on the plus 1 AP, they still get a 6 up save. Um, and against my Forest Rangers as well, they'll get a 6 up save. Uh, he's got the Skin Braves with 3 Caimans and stuff like that, and I looked at it and went, I'm not sure whether I can put the Tree Father into these. Um, maybe two of them together, but on their own, they're going to be pretty dodgy. Because uh, the Tree Fell Brain gives them all poison. He's then got these Temple Guard. They have a club now, so they get parry. And plus two strength. So the strength six with parry. God, they're insane. They're all weaknesses. I was pretty happy with them going into my blade dancers. I think with the right magic setup, if I get the spells through, they're going to be hitting me on five still. But but strength six. Wow, they're good. I, I Yeah, I was just a bit like... Ugh. And then skink hunters. So I'm guessing this is where his uh, skink priest is going to be with druidism. And his possible target. So... Uh, and then a Stigius or a Mystic Traveller and Taurus or a Giant Blowpipes, which I was more worried about Giant Blowpipes than the... I think that's far better than the... Um, uh, than the uh, Great Bow, just because it's poisoned and it's got lots of shots. I think it's got more util utility, especially when you think about um, whether it's monsters or just random chaff, because if they don't want to charge, you can just sit there and shoot them to death. So yeah, that was something I was concerned about. But my tactic was to go in and hunt down using my heath hunters and his stigia so if he put that out early i was going to try and go after his magic just to cut the number of spells down because if it goes down to two or three i can dominate the magic phase a bit more and it just i didn't want him to have druidism if i could or plus one awaken the beast etc otherwise with breakthrough when it got rolled off i looked at it and went great I, I remember turning to someone and went great i'm against saurians and they've got three big blocks this ain't going well. So I was like, oh, this is not going to go fun. But anyway, uh, on to the next bit. So magic, uh, we've got spell selection. So with my drive matriarch on div, I went with scrying and note on enemy for the reasons I've just explained. And I went with healing waters, summer's growth. Um, I thought maybe I'd want to regrow some stuff and healing waters is this. I did think about taking Forest Embrace just to minus one and minus two of his uh, shooting and, and combat score, just to also have another one and know that an enemy. Uh, but I think then I'd have, instead of taking know that an enemy, I'd have taken rerolls to hit, but I just thought I'm hitting so hard I don't need this. And then I've got uh, Forest Embrace and Hand of Heaven, and that's pretty standard. In his one, um, I did miss off the uh, um, her heirloom, so he's got uh, the Spark of Creation, Summer's Growth, Healing Waters. And then uh, his Mystic Traveller's got Awakened Beast and Swarm of Insects. So I really want to take one of them out, just a limited magic phase. And I think they're going to be open for my shooting that I can, at least by turn three, which is good for the back turns. Because Swarm of Insects is actually quite dodgy for my army, because he's hunting for sixes, and any sixes kill a lot of my units, especially my Sentinels, which I think was probably going to be his targets over the Tree Fathers, just because a three out of five up is quite dodgy. Uh, in terms of deployment, so he was new, and we talked about this, and we saw Dawn of Soul, and I said he was like, I mean, I said, right, I'll, I'll tell you what I think. So this was impassable, this was impassable, that was ruins, forest, wall, and then I place this after I worked it out, and there's a hill, and I said, look, you've got two impassable there. It means if you go this side, you're going to have this really two narrow corridors to kind of come down. It's easy for me to block you and stuff like that and i'm really really quite fast i'm not bothered by this this impassable is annoying but i can shove enough into it that i can go there i said look this is your movement corridor choose this side it forces me over this side because that's a bit because the impassable is a bit more on this side i think it doesn't give me as much space and forces me to go into this corner and then i really am in trouble and you just shove three big blocks down there and then use your monsters on this side to actually screw with me. He said, thank you, yep, but he, he still chose this side. So he's chosen his top four, and I chose to drop for first. Same tactic, I wasn't too bothered about manoeuvre. I just thought, right, I'm going to have to go down in the hill, so I want to get 
my blade dancers up into there to give myself a corridor for the dryads to start moving into there with the forest rangers uh, getting up into this area so I can get into his deployment zone I chose to ambush the heath riders which was a mistake I should have just kept them on this right flank and just shoved them here and moved them into the deployment zone and then I've got the sentinels split just in case he splits his monitors with the heath hunters split as well just so around there So, and now onto his deployment. So, what he did was he put his big blocks opposite mine, which I was quite happy with. It meant that we could have some sort of battle in the center and I could block his scoring opportunities. Uh, he then put his torso one way just to see if he could support his big blocks with his druidism behind. <laughs> Seems sensible. Um, and then his carnosaur looking the other way, but they're, they're pretty mobile either way. What I was pretty happy with is it, using the hill. Uh, there's a gap there somewhere where I could uh, get in there with one of my heath hunters. Just looking at it, he's then got the skicks on it further to the left, uh, as you can see here, and then his mystic traveller on this side, which I was pretty happy with because it meant my scouts on my right. So I only had one unit of scouts that was going to be affected by his shamanism spells, uh, but and they're pretty mobile and out of the game. And because uh, look at this, I was like, okay. I'm going to try and draw the skinks in further to the right using the forest, but otherwise I'm going to stick to plan and move up to the right uh, into this gap. This is going to be where my scoring area I thought would be. I'd bring on, try and bring on my Heath Riders on this side and try and destroy these so that if his skinks got in, that was one scoring unit compared to if I can defeat his two of them, which I think I could with between the Blade Dancers, Magic and Forest Rangers, maybe with a couple of Tree Father support. But So overall I was pretty confident with this deployment. Right, turn one. So what happened was I'd vanguarded up here with my Heath Hunters and over to here. And then what I did was I quickly moved them into there. Just check there was this gap here where I couldn't be seen by the Carnosaur, the Taurus or all this. And then I moved this up here and basically my target was going to be these Skinks. Got his Druid on that side. Yes, he's got all there, but I don't think I was going to kill him in this turn, but certainly kill them off in the next turn. I mean, they can join on, but it, it does weaken them off. Uh, other than that, I've moved the centaurs up here on this, just start picking off the Mystic Traveller. This is going to be my second opportunity. Uh, and then I've moved the Tree Fathers both looking this way. I'm not too bothered about the skinks coming up. I'm not going to charge in, not with the Carnosaur there, because I'll just get held and then counter charge. Uh, and I just want to get onto this hill here and start threatening his Temple Guard. I've moved the Blade Dancers straight up, just an advantage. I can cast a spell on them. So what my thought was here is... Um, I completely forgot about their immobile nature. <laughs> I've moved the drives up behind because they're still scoring plan. And then the centers up here with the wizard just so I could cast on this sort of area, at least get a forest embrace up. Uh, this is something I realized with magic. Actually, 18 inches is not as far when you want to cast it on the Heath Hunters. So they, they actually need to be designed a bit more independently. And I'll go on to that in game four when somebody gave me some really good advice that I'd never seen on before. <clears throat> Otherwise, I'm pretty confident position. I'm dominating the centre. And he's... Yeah, I've fixed him. So I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, in Magic, I get off... Uh, just get off Forest Embrace and right-hand Heath Hunters. And then in Shooting, I unload with this unit into these guys. I kill six of them because I'm hitting on... <clears throat> I'm hitting on threes and I'm wounding on twos at short range because that's res two. Um, he then promptly fails his re-rollable cold-blooded leadership nine and they run off the board. <coughs> so that's worked really quite well for me. That's a full turn ahead of what I was expecting. Um, and now his magic is just two spells. So my I got really quite lucky here. And then after this, uh, the right-hand unit just shot into here and I killed off two Saurians, I think. Um, but otherwise, really commanding position now, and I'm really happy with that. And I do nothing to the Mystic Traveller, but quite frankly, I win, <laughs> I think. So I'm really happy with that. Uh, in terms of his movement, uh, he's he's come down here. Uh, he's got uh, his Saurians that he's faced off to this way. I think he's waiting for my scoring unit to come on to the next turn. And, see if he can pressure it but otherwise he's just worried about then coming around his flanks while he comes forward he doesn't want to come into this area because my forest rangers can damage danger him uh, he's then got uh his temple guard moved up a bit his 
Taurosaurus move back just so we can use the blowpipes and try and panic these guys off. Um, his Carnosaur didn't move and I offered it him afterwards. We realised afterwards and I said just move it. It's it's going to move somewhere. I'm not bothered where because um, it would have anyway. So, And then he's brought his Skinks here. I think this is quite good not to go get too sidetracked to actually bring it into the centre because it's still threatening these two. Um, because I think them going in there fixes them quite well. And he's got the Minister Traveller coming down here just so we can use a short range. Uh, swarm of insects, a low casting roll on, on them, but I, that's the one I'm going to stop because I'm not bothered about a week in the beast at the moment. <clears throat> um, oh, last turn I got hard target off as well, I think, as well. Just I don't know why. I don't think it's relevant to any of his shooting, but I think it was in case his blowpipes came forward, maybe. Either way, so I was pretty happy with this uh, setup as well. It means I'm halfway at the board with most of my scoring units. And I was making an assumption that they were going to come on there, or my Heath Riders were going to come on at some point. Um, and he's kept his back here, so yes, he can still score, but it's going to be very difficult for him. Uh, and then, yeah, and this is just a close up view where you can see this even better. Um, his in magic, he does this, so he call, kills two, so I, got, I felt pretty lucky with that, he rolled quite high 20 and I think it was only two sixes, so I was pretty happy with that, so those centaurs are now in a race against time to who can roll the most sixes, him and Swarm of Insects, because I could not spell, I rolled all my dice at it and I still couldn't stop it, it's quite funny, and that's a pretty recurring theme in this, uh, but they, they don't need a panic check this turn, which is pretty good, uh, and then his blowpipes killed off three of, uh, three of my Heath Hunters, but again they pass their panic check. Which I was pretty happy with. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, in a good position. So I'm dominating the board. He's got the left, but I'm definitely going to be pushing him to the right. So my turn two, what I did was I shuffled the heat forest rangers to the right and moved the blade dancers in there just to start pushing him more that way. Dryads did really nothing. Well, I moved my tree fathers across, one looking this way and one looking that way in case he does come down, just to hold him back a bit. Uh, otherwise, I move back my uh, sentinels just to make him come forward a bit and give me some manoeuvre around this impassable if I need to. And then just but made sure I was still in range of that guy. Uh, my forest rangers came up so they could start shooting at the Taurosaur uh, and the Heath Hunters backed off just so they couldn't be charged by this, uh, but it's still fixing. Otherwise, my other Heath Hunters is what the Great came up behind to be short range of the Mystic Traveller, so I can start plinking off some wounds of this guy. So that's my next target. Completely take out his magic and, uh, and just gives me free reign because Awaken the Beast could be really annoying at one time, and Swarm of Insects can do some real weak damage to whether it's my Blade Dancers uh, and even my Sentinels. So, but luckily, they're all over on this side, which I'm pretty happy with. Um, otherwise, I'm hoping he comes forward with these two and I can counter charge with some stuff um, and I can kill this off. In magic nothing really happens though I get like I think I've got scrying off in the center here again and then forest and brace off on these guys but no that was Oaken Throne but otherwise I, I just got divination spells off on <coughs> off on here. Uh, and, and do nothing. I do a couple of wounds to the Mystic Traveller. You can see this is his turn, but I've shot and I've put him down to three wounds left, so I did two wounds to him. Um, other than that, I did no wounds here and I just did a couple of this. More importantly, my Heath Riders didn't come on. So I was a bit like, okay, I've still got two more turns. I did explain to him at this point, and he's like, well, on a three plus, that's going to happen. I was like, yeah, I'm pretty confident still, but it was a mistake. I said to him, I was like, I should have just kept them on. They've got an 18 inch move. I can get up off the board into your deployment turn in two turns. Why am I doing this? Especially now, because I could have just moved them up, um, moved them up to somewhere here, um, kept them out of sort of insect range, and just left them there for several turns until I decided to move in. I mean, otherwise he's lost this scoring unit here. What he has done is he's brought, and then on his turn he brought them forward here. So he didn't do any charges, but he brought his Sorens forward just to close this gap here. But it means I can move around him, and that is a 14 inch charge so I need nine on two dice and it's a flank. I was like, hmm, it's gonna be interesting. Otherwise he's moved them up here just to start threatening my center with his big monsters. Um, he's realized my shooting is gonna take him off over time without his druiders and magic so he's just pushing up as the same with the skinks and the mystic travel on this side. Uh, in terms of swarm of insects he takes four centels off this time but uh, I do because I, I throw all my dice at it again and don't stop it. So. 
So that's <laughs> that's a return bad luck. Um, but um, on the plus side, they passed their uh, leadership check. I think that's it there with the two and a three. So yet again, uh, that's it. Oh, right. So I had to replace my tame measure turn one of game one because as I as I measured something, it something flicked out and pinged and shot onto the other table over there <laughs> straight away. That was pretty bad. So during my break after turn one. I went and bought a new tape measure from the shop because it was just unworkable. But anyway, and I think I broke that one over the weekend as well. So I, I need to find more robust tape measures. I think that's what I've learned. Um, but otherwise, pretty happy. Uh, and then in my turn, as you can see, spoiler, I've charged the uh, forest rangers into the flank of his saurians with his BSB. So I think with that, I, yeah, I'm pretty confident with that that I can blow through and i'm on there i'm into his deployment so objective so it's all pretty good uh otherwise i've moved up my druid mate and div here just so i can cast as many spells as possible into this area but that does mean my blade dancers are in range of just about that and that it's extreme so what i've done is i'm gonna have to do three plus ages i think they can hold and i've made sure my for my tree father can do a counter charge just to support them in this flank but i'd rather it wasn't with the Carnosaur there, because I think still on the charge, off the charge, the Carnosaur eats my avatar, weird, because he gets D3 wounds to large or gigantic or something, so I'm not really hopeful of that, but hopefully I can challenge him out with something, uh, otherwise I've moved these back here, just to keep shooting there with uh, the forest, uh, with the Heath Hunters, uh, and this is monitoring the skinks, what I should have done here though is move both tree fathers so they're both able to counter charge and therefore I could have got two tree fathers into whatever was was doing it. Um, in magic I got, uh, he, I gave him a choice, either hit me on fives with sixes reroll through forest embrace or um, uh, a four plus fortitude save and he chose four plus fortitude save. So I, I don't know whether that's the right option, doesn't matter, but either way that's the way it goes. On the other hand, my forest rangers don't come on, uh, my heath riders don't come on again. So, uh, yeah, that's a bit annoying. So I've only got one more turn to fail and then I can't do anything anymore. Anyway. Um, uh, yeah, so that's just that. Uh, I don't, I think I do one more wound to the Mystic Traveller, so he's still there with two wounds, which is really quite annoying. It's like, ah, you don't rid me of this meddlesome priest. Um, but otherwise, this is the big thing that's confident. Now, I swing first and I kill a load. I'm, I'm up on points. It's really good. But remember when I talked about Crocodile? He gets plus one armor. This were his save. So I rolled really quite hot for hitting and wounding. So I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 15. So 15 wounds through. And he did 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 saves. So I only killed 9. Ah. And then my 4 plus 4 tubes weren't great. So he had a re-rollable 4, I think, cold-blooded, or 3. No, it was 2. No, he, he needed, he just gave him enough for re-rollable box cars. Uh, so not box cars, the other one, snake eyes, to pass. And he's cold-blooded with a re-roll. So there's part of me like, hmm, hmm, this could be interesting. And, but he didn't make it. And so he ran. And I caught him. So very happy with this. And I think at that point that was game me probably. Um, I think if the Heath Riders, uh, there's still an opportunity because the Temple Guard are still quite vicious and he's got a lot of monsters. But temper, but if the Forest Rangers, if the Heath Riders have come on at that point, that's objective me. I think I've got enough to kill his Temple Guard. Um, and yeah, that's, that's objective me. And I think at that point, points are in my favour because I've still got quite a lot of shooting to take at least a couple of the monsters out. I've still got magic there to regrow. My blade dance is still intact. I, I'm pretty happy. And the first rangers are as well. So the Heath Riders have come on. I could have stuck them in the deployment zone and turned my entire army around and still gone after them. But um, that it didn't the case this turn. So here's turn three. He's realised he's going to have to push here quite hard. So this is more... We've missed his turn three, but I'll talk you through it. So what he did is he moved his um, his Mystic Traveller there forward. Um, and I think it's it's either on two or one wounds. It's not on much. Um, but it's just a... What he does is try to get another shot off at these guys. And I think this time I managed to stop it, which means he skinks forward into this area. 
Um, he, yeah, on his turn three, he moves his skinks into this area here. Uh, and otherwise, he just pushes forwards on this uh, top here, just so he's going to have the reroll into my Blade Dancers, um, because he didn't want it. It was not an easy charge. He failed with the Temple Guard here, which is why the Vinny stumbled forward. Um, otherwise, yeah, and otherwise nothing else happens. Uh, in my turn, I've decided to turn around the Forest Rangers and move them back here. I did some sums. Yes, I think the Blade Dancers could get, but I just thought it's it's good. It's okay to bring them out. But if these all of them charge into Blade Dancers, I don't think they can take them. And my shooting could completely bluff. And that could only so I need this flare the blade, uh, the Forest Ranger support. And then he's into my objective anyway, and he wins between the Skinks and the Temple Guard. So I, I lose a lot of points because they this is the only problem I found with the Dryads and the Dryad Matriarch. I tended to have a lot of bounce through. So you had the you tend to have blade dancers, especially on something like breakthrough, and then the drives with my general. So all of that points together is worth about uh, 400, 600, 900, it's about 1500 points all in because my bit, the 400 points for my BSB and uh, and the other uh, and the uh, general. So it, it's quite hefty in that, and I don't, I think that goes against what the list is trying to do with lots of units that are below 500 points, but um yeah that can actually just take a hit this is this is sort of like the one combo that doesn't quite work so well with it especially if you have something like Theldrax or or even in this case like two big monsters overrun they've got impact hits yeah, it's going to be quite bad so uh in my turn i've moved my blade dancers to the back here uh just to give him a longer charge it means his temple guard wouldn't be steadfast in this forest um why wouldn't they be steadfast Something, something changed that. I think they're, I think they're, um, I think they're Strider anyway. I may have missed that. Either way, uh, and then I've got the blade, down, uh, the drive matrix behind. This is also another one that worries me. What I should have done at this point is he should have dropped out, maybe into here, and the drives should have been making a punch for it there. But because they're so immobile, yeah, I just needed that from the word go. Otherwise, I switched the Sentinels over to this side. What I want to do, I basically want to shoot at this. This is going to be my next target because if I got this off, because I think I I've got a few wounds off at last turn, maybe a single wound, I can bring it down to some really quite low amount of damage. And then what I've done there is I've just moved them out of the range. So these when the, these guys come in, because what what I thought he was going to do is charge them in there, push them forward, and then bring them around to flank to flank charge and just go into here and then take the objective. So I move the tree father back here to counter charge and block his skinks. And this one here, just to block his Mystic Traveller coming around, have a few pot shots and force him, and then if necessary, go around this way and trap the skink block. Um, what happens? Uh, so, yeah, that's described on my turn four. And this is it. These are the rolls. I, I did a lot of poison. Effectively, between the Heath Hunters and the shooting, I killed. In fact, I didn't even need one of the Heath Hunters, they got a shoot at the Taurusaur, so this this guy got killed, so that's a massive change in points. I'm feeling pretty confident in terms of the battle. Uh, and then uh, I managed to get some spells off on these guys as well, so even if they do charge me, um, they're hitting me on five, so I managed to get Scrying off, and no, he stopped Scrying, because that means even his general's hitting on fives. Um, but he didn't stop, no down enemy in that, so his unit is hitting me on fives and re-rolling sixes to hit me because of the forest embrace. So I was pretty happy with that. Uh, in terms of uh, his turn four, yep, these are actually charged in, it's just we couldn't connect them because of the models. Um, and he's moved to skinks as thought, so my true father's going to have to go and risk it into a poison, but luckily it's a flank. And then his Mystic Traveller, this doesn't does come around here. This is him starting to work out how to move around. And he's taking DTs off now. I think only only two of them died to DTs or something. It wasn't very high. Um, one thing to be noted here, when these guys went in, the champion died of a DT. I think it was one of it, like only ones, but that was the critical one that had to die. So now I challenge his general's got to take it. So my, my champion is definitely challenging him. It gives my BSB free up to murder his unit, so I'm pretty happy with that. Otherwise, he's uh, this guy failed the charge, I believe, uh, so he's now stuck there um, with all my shooting pointing at him. Uh, and now, hopefully, the plan is they hold and the forest rangers come in there and I just wipe them out next turn. It's not a long charge, it's like a five inch I need or something, but it's, it's very slightly more from the champion. 
So otherwise, I'm in a pretty commanding position. I think he just wanted to see what the clock score would do in combat, the tempo guard would do in combat. Uh, in terms of magic, though, he did, as I said, he brought up this round. He got another swarm of insects off. I could, I, I just stopped to waken the beast on these guys this time. I didn't want, because I knew he was hitting me on fives, we rolling sixes. I didn't want him to get awaken the beast off because I wasn't going to choose the three plus ages. I was going to go through him uh, quite harshly. I think I chose plus one attack. I just wanted to murder them as much as possible and see if I could break them on next turn. Um, or, or at least get as many. No, in fact, I did choose three plus ages, but I didn't want them for the following turn when they came in to be res five and all the rest of it. So I, that's when I stopped. I let them have a swarm of insects and he killed this unit, but they've done their job with that, so I'm pretty happy and that's left on one wound. Uh, yep, this is the combat, so he only loses, I only lose two, and my champion survives <laughs> between three plus ages, so his lord is still locked in duel, and I take off a rank and a bit. I don't kill that many, but that's okay, and I, I didn't want to on this, because actually the more I kill, the further the charge is for the forest rangers. So I'm pretty happy. Um, I don't know what happened with the picture here, it's just really, really bright. Um, and this one's even worse. I think I was playing around with the thing, but... In short, uh, the big news, they failed their charge. I think I rolled a four, and that's not good enough. So so on the plus side, they can't be charged by this. On the downside, they are now right in range of these guys, so that's not great. Uh, in terms of um, combat, I charged the tree father in here just to block them off. Um, I didn't want them not going into the... They pass their terror check, which is fine, so they'll turn and tree, and those will be fixed probably till the end of the game unless they kill my tree father off. Uh, I've moved the other tree father around just because I'm going to try and charge him in as well. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to do that yet because it's quite narrow with the impassable here. Uh, and then Heath Hunters have moved up and they're just going to take off this last wound of the Mystic Traveller and get rid of it for me while my other centaurs buff... Basically, I want to buff these guys and shoot this guy. Uh, in terms of shooting, I do kill the Mystic Traveller. Uh, and then in combat, uh, I kill a load of more off, and he still doesn't kill my champion. So champion is still locked in there, and that's really quite good. But it does mean I'm got the magic, I've got the magic up to what I want. He didn't let he, he had a really bad phase, so I've got... I didn't get Forest and Brace off, but I did get uh, Scrying. But either way, uh, I punched a load of his models off, but I was still not able to break them. So... Um, yeah, that's unfortunate. So it's going to be his turn six next, but I don't think he, he couldn't charge the Taurusaur in there, but neither could he charge it in anything else. There was a long charge here, but I don't think he wanted it. And I've got the BSB on this side, so they're within a rerollable nine uh, range. I've moved the general over to the other side as well, so they're all safe. And then in combat here with the Skinks, um, it's basically, I kill a lot of him, but nothing else, and he does nothing to me. And I move sideways, because I realised I'd blocked my true father from going in there in the following turn, so but I should have kept forward. It was it was a bad error here. I should have I should have made sure I was forward to minimise um, his combat res. I I don't know why I did that, but I did. Um, yeah. Uh, in terms of sh his turn five, so he's moved to sideways here to take off a few of those before they charge into here. Um, he's got no magic to support, so it's really quick. Uh, and then in combat, we just do this, so it's a bit of a fluff. I think he does kill my champion this time. Um, or doesn't he? No, I don't think he does again. He was, his lord was really unlucky, even with that. So it, this magic worked really well. Um, he's hitting on fours, re-rolling sixes. Or something. I think I got lucky here, and I got scrying off, rather than know that. And then I, instead of know that enemy, I... I did Forest Embrace, just to get those rerolls to win. No, I can't remember, sorry. Um, either way, uh, and then in these, I win combat, killing a few more of them. I do really well, but uh, other than that, it's over. Uh, in my turn, oh, sorry. Yeah, this is after combat. So he's killed a few more, but um, yeah, you can see his unit's really going down. The only being I've got longer charge range now, charge for my Forest Rangers now. So in my turn, I charge the other tree farther in. Um, I have to leave this guy's flank, so and that, but you can see he's quite whittled down. And between two thunder stomps, they're going to go crazy. The Heath Hunters have now surrounded the Taurus Aura because I think um, there's a chance I could kill him between all of that. Um, 
and then the dryads, everything else is stuck there. What I have done is I might sacrifice the objective, but I've got two turns to kill this, and I think I can. Um, these guys are as good as dead. I don't think they'll even get to attack this turn. Maybe the Lord will in the duel, but he'll probably kill my champion off, but then they will either get run down or not. Basically, my target is going to kill the Temple Guard, because then the Lord is not steadfast. We did have a conversation about this, but somebody checked, and yeah, it's, it's fine. So, um, yeah, that's what happened. Kill him off. I lose a I lose a champion. He finally dies, and he gets one more in the overkill. Uh, but other than that, that's the unit gone, uh, which I'm really happy with. Um, I kill this down really, really low. Um, he's not going to have a rank, or he's going to have one rank. At which point, he's not steadfast next turn um, against two tree fathers, and he's going into his turn six. So I think I, I could break them quite easily because they'll be on. They won't have a general's leadership. They won't have a banner BSV, and they're probably going to go. But in the interest of time, I called it, and at that point, I knew I was quite a lot of points up. Um, he's got the objective at the moment, because my Heath Riders haven't turned up. No Heath Riders. Well done, guys. So, <laughs> I've learnt my lesson. But um, the one thing I brought them forward to be mobile scoring, and I didn't use them for that, because I thought I was going to be clever. Uh, and <laughs> So that was my mistake. Uh, but I, I kind of called it there. I, I kind of said, look, do you want to... I'm happy to call it now. I think you'll get at least three points because no one wants to get 20 nailed on their very first game in ninth age um, ever at all. And so I kind of, we didn't play his back six, which would have just been painful for him. This might have shot something off, but I don't think it would have done enough to kill a unit. And this, yeah, you can't magic buff them. There's only about far, there's only a front rank there of about six plus that. And then you've got three croc score. And I just kill the skinks off and then, yeah. It's half leadership, and, and that's really bad for him. So, and that was how the game ended. A good start. Um, Heath Riders didn't never get... We stopped rolling after turn four because they didn't really matter anymore, so we got those points. Um, and he got the Centaurs with Swarm Insects with the Mystic Traveller. But otherwise, I got everything, including the General and BSB points, apart from... Uh, apart from the Taurosaur and the Skinks. I don't think I added the Skink points in, though that could have been it they might have got half points for them but but effectively the difference is about 3300 which is 173 but he got the exception objective so it was a 14-6 so uh it was a brilliant game uh it was good fun i think i think i played it well uh, i think because it's first time back i should win but um i was really happy with the combo the there was a few things that i've started to notice about my list uh that i think are a weakness and it's it's this area here there's a few areas but here i'm starting to realize there's a problem here these are a scoring dart i like using the scoring darts but i can't if my general's in there and i need him to buff here there's nothing else he can jump to so unless this was a clearing spirits unit which i can't do because then i go down to three two scoring only and i, I don't like that um so I think this is a big one. Also, 12 inches is not that far. It's not going to primary leadership nine was to give this a bit of better stubborn, but they're just not there unless. And the unit they really, really need to support with magic is these guys. So maybe. So this is where, and because I've played quite wide with Silver Nails, like it's not that mobile either. So I'm starting to realise that maybe taking two wizards between them would have been a better option um so like shamanism all that because the plus one strength and the blade dancers and the forest rangers makes them so much more deadly um yeah i'm starting to think that may be the way to go so that's the one thing i was starting a bit worried about the list but otherwise i think it's very good and i'm very happy with that um yeah a uh, bit of hobby corner this was uh, the list i'm not I've put this on hold now. I've got enough models in green forest so that I can switch fire to my project of winter, uh, which I'm really looking forward to. And also, I'm, um, yeah, and I'm also going to start a little bit of the VC stuff in the slow time. I've got some good ideas. I want to use some like werewolf models as gas or something like that. But it's, yeah, it's going to be quite good fun. Um, really quite happy. It's not a great photo, but okay. But yeah, happy days. Uh, I hope uh, you had fun. Uh, hopefully I can get some music on to give it a bit more dramatic effect, but hopefully you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching.